I like nuts. Squirrels like nuts. You like nuts. We're all nuts for nuts. Today we're going to make my favorite pastry dessert, baklava. So to start, we got to get all our nuts together. Here I have walnuts, pecans, and pistachios. Make sure to inspect them thoroughly. Next, grind each type of nut. The important thing when grinding the nuts is to do each type of nut separately. The pistachios break a lot faster than the walnuts, so you are going to want to do these separately, otherwise you will have mismatched consistencies. Your nuts should be about the consistency as shown, not too coarse, but definitely not too fine. Because we are fancy, we're going to add cinnamon to each nut. Put one teaspoon for each cup of nuts that you have. Oh yeah, we're also going to add a little bit of cardamom. Now just mix it all up. It's time for assembly. We're going to get our phyllo dough ready. We will use 16 sheets of phyllo dough in total. Now for the unhealthy part, we're going to melt one stick of butter. Even though it's unhealthy, it's definitely worth it. So whatever. The way that we're going to do this is that we are going to apply melted butter between the layers of phyllo dough, stacking them as you would lasagna. We will butter every layer to every other layer. For this recipe, I'm using a 7 by 11 inch container. Of course, you can appropriately scale the ingredients as required to meet your needs. You may notice that the phyllo dough is a little bit large for the container that it's in. That is okay. It is better for it to be a little bit big than for it to be a little bit small. I don't usually speed up my videos, but I did here just so that way you don't have to look at my hands. And I did still want to show all of the steps. You can see that I'm pressing down the dough each time that I apply a new layer. This is so that the butter can bleed through each layer. This is very important. This ensures that the entire structure will be continuous and connected after baking. If this is not done properly, then the phyllo dough layers will actually just fall off of the structure which is not what we want. We really want to make sure that our bottom base is very secure and can hold up the rest of the assembly. We will then continue making our stacks on stacks, as we oftentimes do here at the Pursuit of Happy Meals. Once you lay down six layers on the bottom, we're going to apply our first layer of nuts. Spread the pecans properly and apply some butter. Uh oh, where's my dough though? So to continue, we then will put two more layers of phyllo dough, followed by another layer of nuts, then you guessed it, two more layers of dough. Oh my lord, this dough has tears. It's okay. Don't worry about it. When you bake it, they will all fill nicely. It is absolutely fine if there are some tears. Trust me. I wanted to spotlight the pistachios here for no other reason other than I think they look pretty and they are my favorite nut. So you get the privilege of looking at them longer. What I like to do as I go through this process is to really think about what it will taste like when I'm done. That gives me the motivation to keep on going because this does take some time. 
Let's keep going and really feel those good vibes. At last, we will put our final layer of nuts, followed by six additional top layers. On the top layer, make sure to apply extra butter. Other thoughts that come to mind while going through this process are, what makes a good reality television show? We know that they're all scripted, but some of the parodies, like The Real Husbands of Hollywood, are just even better than the things that they are parodying. So in my mind, The Real Husbands of Hollywood sets the bar for the ideal reality television show. And if you haven't seen it, maybe you should watch it while you make this recipe. Let your mind, let your body and your soul go. It's all right. Get your money stack, more dough. Nelly. 2010. Once that is done, we will refrigerate our entire assembly for one hour so that the butter can harden. After the butter hardens, we will be able to cut it prior to baking. It should now look something like this and firm to the touch. To make our gorgeous diamond shapes, I cut first along the long edge in straight sections. Then I turn my knife and cut at a 45 degree angle. Eventually, it should look as shown. Once we're done cutting, we will place this in a 350 degree oven for 45 minutes. In the meantime, let's move on to making our super delicious honey syrup. Over high heat, start with 3 quarter cups of water, 1 cup of sugar. Now I know it seems like a lot of sugar, but this is actually about half what a normal recipe would call for. The most important thing here is to make sure to put in 1 quarter cup of honey. The honey is what gives the baklava a very distinct taste. To layer this further, we will add some saffron and three cloves. Don't forget to put a quarter teaspoon of vanilla. Why do we put vanilla, you ask? Because it's good. Cook your syrup mixture on medium high heat and stir occasionally. Combine all of the ingredients. Eventually, the mixture should start to boil, at which point give it a small stir and turn off the heat. Congratulations, your wonderful syrup is ready! So you can now take your baklava out of the oven. Ooh, it looks so nice, crisp, and flaky. You can now pour over your syrup. I reserved about a quarter of the syrup to use at a later time. However, you can feel free to use all of it. Although it seems like a lot, the baklava itself is very thick, so you will need to put a decent amount of syrup. Because you already cut it, taking out pieces should now be easy. And oh man, they look so, so good. I plated them here and couldn't help myself and dug in. If you have never had this before, then please, please give this a shot. It is absolutely incredible, and your family will love you for making it. Oh, hey, I didn't see you there. Subscribe.